Welcome to Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Our top story, the District of Columbia passes the nation's most expansive paid leave law. The Universal Paid Leave Amendment Act provides for a combined 16 weeks of paid time off for parental, family, and personal sick leave. Despite D.C. Mayor Bowser's opposition to the law, she returned the bill unsigned. That means it'll go into effect in the spring unless Congress acts to intervene. Brian Steinbach has more. Starting in July of 2019, employers will have to pay a 0.62% payroll tax to finance this benefit. Um, they don't have to pay the employees directly. Instead, they'll pay into a fund that will pay the employees. Presently, there is, under the D.C. Family and Medical Leave Act, up to 16 weeks of unpaid medical leave and 16 weeks of unpaid family leave. This now uh, adds a concurrent period that would be paid, which suggests it would be more likely to be used. New regulations on payroll debit cards and direct deposit payments in New York have been revoked. The regulations included written notice and written consent requirements, as well as the regulation of fees charged by payroll debit card providers. The New York State Industrial Board of Appeals revoked the regulations, finding that the Commissioner of Labor exceeded his authority by seeking to restrict banking activities and financial institutions. The Fifth Circuit backs the NLRB in an outsourcing dispute. The board found that a management company violated the National Labor Relations Act when they outsourced the cleaning staff of a hotel they managed. The board found evidence that the outsourcing decision was related to the workers' interest in union representation. The NLRB rejected the company's argument that their decision was due to declining guest satisfaction, concluding that the company was at least in part motivated by anti-union animus. The Fifth Circuit has now rejected an appeal by the company, noting that the court was obligated to pay special deference to the NLRB's credibility findings in cases with conflicting evidence like this one. Proposed regulations from HHS include new requirements for employers. New regulations from the Department of Health and Human Services are designed to help stabilize the health insurance exchanges. Though the proposals focus on individual coverage, there are some provisions that will impact employers. New requirements would institute stricter verification for mid-year enrollment through the state and federal exchanges. Individuals claiming loss of employer-sponsored coverage as the reason for special enrollment would need timely, written verification from their employer. The regulations would take effect by mid-2017. And that brings us to our tip of the week. Nasheen Rokaria, Associate General Counsel for Visiting Nurse Service of New York, is here with some advice on leave as a reasonable accommodation under the ADA based on guidance from the EEOC. While the document itself didn't necessarily break any new ground, it did reiterate the EEOC's position that a simple request for medical leave does constitute a request for a reasonable accommodation that thereby triggers on the part of the employer an obligation to go through this interactive process. Undue hardship analysis is the other piece of this puzzle. Whether a qualified disabled individual has a right to reassignment in a vacancy without having to compete with others for that position. The EEOC's position on this is that a qualified disabled individual does have a right to that vacancy, and further that an employer cannot require that employee to compete with others. However, we have a recent 11th Circuit Court decision that cuts the other way. At this point, because it remains somewhat of an open question, employers are advised to stay abreast of any developments on this question in their jurisdictions. Thanks, Nasheen. That's it for Employment Law this week. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.